Hi, this is Destiny from Desfix and welcome back to another video in the hotel management system series using Django. In this one, we'll get started working with integrating Flutterwave payment gateway in Django. That is what we'll be doing. Hopefully you will enjoy the video and learn something new. So let's get started. Begin by opening up your code editor. And you remember in the last one, we worked with fixing the errors for the date and also the prompt for when a user wants to delete a room. We are done with all that. So you could go ahead and close up those tabs. Now what you want to do is open up the checkout HTML and start working with integrating Flutterwave. But before I do that, I want to add um, like one, two or three rooms here and get back to my selected room and also check out. So I will fill this up and hit continue to check out. There you go. It says review your order before payment. And you can see that right now we have only PayPal and Stripe, but we also need Flutterwave and Paystack. So I will create buttons for Flutterwave and Paystack. This one here is pay with Stripe. You, you could go ahead and duplicate this one. Um, hold on, let me see. So you could take this and duplicate it down here. And instead of pay with Stripe, it's let's say pay with Paystack and also pay with Flutterweave. But since we are working with Flutterweave in this video, let's change this one to Flutterweave for now. Okay. And I also need to add a style and give it a background color, not type, but a style and give it a background color. And I could call this one, I could say FF9 B O O that's flutter waves color okay and right now when we reload this page you can see that okay so to integrate flutter wave there is how we actually do it you can integrate flutter wave from the server which is your django server or you can actually work with integrating it using inline js or you could even integrate it using html checkout so there are a lot of ways that you could use to implement or integrate flutter wave I will highly recommend that you check out the documentation to be able to work with any of the checkouts depending on what you want. For this one, I'll be working with the HTML checkouts because that's the most straightforward and the easiest one that anyone will be able to pick up in no time. So start off by creating a form and the action of this form should go to HTTPS. Uh -oh, that should be HTTPS column double slash. Then you want to say checkout dot flutterwave.com slash v3 slash hosted slash pay okay so with this out of the way you want to add a csrf token here which means that the method of this will be a post method so post all right now that now that we have that we're done with that we will begin adding some inputs the very first one will have a name of public key, public key. And for this one, the value, you can remove the ID. The value of this should be your flutter wave public key. So F L W P B K F L W P B K underscore tests then you have dash, then your key should be over here, all right? So I will pretty much grab a key. Let's see, if you open up Flutterwave um, inline payments, let's see, and you open this up, you could even open up the HTML checkout because that's what you're working with. So open up the HTML checkout, then you can see this code over here. This is what we are working with. So if you don't wanna have to type all this out, you could pretty much grab this code here you could take this and replace our form with it okay this will still work the same way then i want you to remove this order 2000 and can you see that action that we typed the method posts all are the same thing and this is the public key this is its value here so this is the free public key that flutterwave has given us for testing you could go ahead and add your own public key if you want to mock your own payments in your account and see the values coming in real time. It's up to you how you want to do it. Now for the email, what we want to say over here is booking 
dot email. We will do the same thing for the full name. So instead of Iomi Day, what we want to say is booking dot full name. And instead of this txref over here, I want you to say booking dot booking underscore ID so that it appends our own, our own custom ref. Then booking dot total should be for the amount. Currency can be NGN, which is Nigeria Naira. But if you want to work with USD, which is United States dollars, you could go ahead and change this to USD. And this booking will automatically be made in USD. It's up to you what, which one you want to work with. Now, I want you to take this button and put it in here in the form and delete the one that they gave us. I don't need that. But let's take the type and ID and put it over here. Okay, then delete this one. I hope all this makes sense. So now that we have all this, just one thing is missing and that is the callback URL. Now I want you to add a name and add redirect underscore URL. Then over here is where you will put the URL that we get, that you will get redirected back to. And one thing you need to know is that as soon as a payment is done, you will be redirected to whatever URL that you specified with the status and txref. So I will highly recommend that you check out how the status and txref works, which pretty much means you can actually grab the txref and use it to query a payment to see if it went through on Flutterwave's end or not. Apart from that, Flutterwave will also be giving us a status, which will help us know if the payment was successful, failed, pending, or cancelled. Okay? So you can see over here that they have a redirect URL, which is this one here. See this? That is exactly what we were trying to do. I'll put this in here. Now, instead of this value, you will want to add in your own URL. So my own URL will be port 8000, 127.0.0.1, port 8000. But guess what? This will cause an issue because Flutterwave does not accept local hosts redirecting. Okay? So what you want to do is spin up um, an ngrock server what you simply want to do is hop over to ngrock official website and download the ngrock executable file. Install it just like you would install any other application that you've downloaded. And I want you to open up your comment prompt. If you open up your comment prompt and you type out ngrock and you see all this code over here, that means ngrock is now successfully installed. You can actually check out, um, you do some research how to download ngrock ngrock in windows since i'm on a windows pc so you can follow this download it through their documentation on how to install it and when everything is successfully set up you can now work with ngrock so all you need to do is say ngrock ngrock or ngrock i don't know how you want to pronounce that http 8000 so this will spin up our local server here on a url so this url now when accessed over here will still give us our website so this is a way to actually temporarily host your website while still in development you can give anywhere you can give anybody anywhere in the world this url and they can be able to access your website provided that your server is still running okay it's not the most efficient way, but it's one of the easiest ways to test your website using a live URL. Now that we are getting this issue, what I usually like doing since I'm in development is pretty much add a star here. So after adding this, our code will reload and we save this. So when you want to redirect, okay, that is working now. So now you take this code and put it in here. Now, what is the success page? Let me open up this. And this is it here. That is the payment success page. So I'm going to this URL slash the payment success page. But instead of this booking ID, let's actually add the booking dot booking underscore ID. Okay. And we need a couple of things to be appended. Firstly, we need the success ID should be equal to booking dot success id i also need the booking total booking underscore total should be equal to then i want you to add booking dot 
total. As simple as that, we are done. So now that all this has been completed as expected, when you get back to your site and over here, you reload this page, let's see what we have. Okay, you can see that we have this button and as soon as you click on this, it will open up Flutterwave's hosted payment page. And now you can see everything coming in. You can see the price coming in the Naira, the email coming in, and all this looks good. So you could go ahead and pay and hit I've made this bank transfer. And this is just a mock payment, hopefully you know. And after some time, the payment will get confirmed. It's actually working like it's real. And you will see us get redirected back to this page. And the status over here shows completed, right? And you can also see the TX ref, the transaction ID, and all this really nice information that gets appended. So now we can see checkout and payment successful. We have sent your booking summary to this particular email. Your booking ID is this. So it works perfectly well as expected. You can see. I think that was pretty much it. In the next one, we'll get started working with Paystack payments. Now, I want you to know that there are a lot of things that still goes into um, making payments using any online payments out there. One thing that I would recommend that you do is you actually integrate webhook. So you can see that Flutterwave say that they will send you a webhook if enabled. This is one of the ways that you could use to securely check if the payment has gone through. And there are still a lot of ways. For example, you could verify the final state of the transaction and things like that. So I would highly recommend that you actually go through these documentations, go through webhook and see how all this works. So I'm gonna make a follow up. So I will make a follow up tutorial for webhook to describe how it works and how you could be able to use it to verify transactions. And also I will make another tutorial for this transaction verification over here that you could use your TX, TX ref to verify transaction. And you know, pretty much secure your payments and do things like that. I will also recommend that you start checking this out before the tutorial drops also. And um, I think that will be pretty much it. In the next one, we'll get started working with Paystack. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If there is something that you don't understand, if there is something that you want me to explain, drop your questions in the comment section below and I will be more than happy to help you out. And also in case I don't see your comments and don't reply, you can also shoot a mail to desfix at gmail.com and we'll do our possible best to reply you. I hope to see you in the next video. Check out one of the courses in the description. One of them might help you become even a better Python Django developer. Until the next video, my love, peace out.